Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to explain how to create a new window and retain the grid lines and freeze panes. So this is based on a popular video that I published a few weeks ago on comparing two different worksheets in the same workbook using the new window feature. And there was a lot of great feedback from our community and as Jane and Scott and Russ and others mentioned, they use this tip on a daily basis. And of course I'm super happy to hear this, but I also realized there were a few things that I forgot to mention in that first video. So a big thanks to Jack, Tom, and Michael for pointing out those issues with the grid lines, freeze panes, and saving files. And in this video, I'm going to quickly explain those potential issues and show a workaround that will save you a lot of time using a macro I created. So the first issue is with the grid lines and freeze pane settings not applying to the new window. So you can see on this sheet here that I have the grid lines turned off. You can also see that from the view tab grid lines right here. The grid lines are those uh, borders, those gray borders around the cells. Currently have those turned off. I also have freeze panes here. So if we scroll down, we will still see uh, th row three and above displayed at the top. So those are the freeze panes there. Now, when we create the new window, we go to view tab, new window. We now have our dash two workbook, but you can see that the freeze panes are gone and the grid lines are turned on. So this is really just reverting back to the default settings of the startup template, which typically has the grid lines on, and of course it will have the freeze panes off. And this is true for every sheet in the workbook. So if you had other sheets that also had the grid lines off, maybe this sheet here, we had the grid lines off, they will now be turned on and default or reverted back to the default settings for every single sheet in that new window. And this can cause a few problems. Uh, first of all, you might want to see it with the grid lines off or the freeze panes on, so you'd have to go reset those settings. Another potential issue is if you save the workbook now, we have the dash two window open, and we save the workbook now, uh, these settings will be saved with the workbook, and we could potentially lose our original settings. So the best thing to do when you're done with the additional window is to again, close that window down. So make sure you go to the dash two window or if you have more than uh, two open dash three and so on, close that window down and then you'll just be back to the original window. Here you can see there's no dash after the file name and now we would want to save and close and that will confirm or ensure that we have our original window settings there applied to this workbook and those settings will be saved. And then another issue that Michael pointed out is if you do uh, create a new window and then we uh, save the file now, the dash two here, if we save uh, on this window here and then close down the file completely, close down both windows, when we reopen the file again, both of those windows will be open. So you'll get a dash one and a dash two window when you open the file again. Now you might want that, you might not, but it's just good to know that behavior. So if you don't want that, close down the dash two window first, then uh, save the file, so just close this window, then go ahead and save the file as is without the dash there, and that will save this workbook just as it is, and that way next time you reopen it, you'll see the same settings applied. Now, I believe these issues are something that should be fixed within Excel, but until that time, I've created a workaround with a macro. So I'll jump over to my personal macro workbook, and here's the macro here. I'll make this available for free download, so you can put this in your personal macro workbook as well. I also have another video series that explains the personal macro workbook and how to set it up if you don't have it set up yet. But the nice part about this is, is that we can run this macro on any open file. So this macro will create a new window and apply all of those window level settings for grid lines, freeze panes, and even the headings or the headers, the row and column headers. It will apply that to the new window for every single sheet in the workbook. So here's the macro here. I won't go through it in too much detail, but you can definitely check it out and uh, also add to it if you'd like. And then it also sets up uh, the split screen, side by side split screen using the arrange method in VBA. So it'll set up the split screen as well. So let's take a look at how it works. Now back in Excel, I've also added these buttons here to run the macro on the view tab. So I've added a new group here in the view tab and added the macro buttons right here. I have another video that explains how to do this and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video as well. 
So I'll go ahead and uh, click my new window button here to run the macro. And I'll take a few seconds because of course it's going through every single sheet in the workbook, but it does that. It applies those grid lines and freeze pane settings. Here's our new window over here and you can see the grid lines are disabled, not applied here, and the freeze panes are applied. So again, we can still scroll down, see those freeze panes right here. And like I mentioned, it also sets up the uh, split screen view for us automatically. So it saves us a bunch of time doing all those steps. And if you go through all the sheets in the workbook, you'll see that the setup is the same. So again, this sheet here uh, has a grid lines turned off. It also has freeze panes on row three. If we jump over to window number one on the data sheet, we'll see that's the same setup here as well. And if you want more than two windows open, the macro still absolutely works. I'll click the new window button again here to run the macro, and we'll see that we'll get now uh, three windows open with the same workbook, all side by side, all with the same window settings. And the side-by-side -side feature is something you could turn off within the macro. So if you wanted to create the new window but not have the split screen view here, you can turn that off within the macro and you'll still get all those window level settings retained in the new window. Now, there are a few important things to note here. And the first, and I forgot to mention this in the previous video, when we make any edits or modifications to the file in any of the windows, those changes will be reflected immediately in the other windows. So for example, if we just go to this cell right here, in window number two, and I'll change this uh, value to 35 and hit enter, we can see that value is reflected here in the other windows. So you can absolutely work in the file in this side-by-side -side view and make updates to it. Now, the one caveat to this, the one place where this breaks is at the window level settings. So for example, if we go to window two here, we'll go to the view tab and in the show section, we'll turn grid lines on for this sheet. You can see that the grid lines have not been turned on for window number one. And this is also true for the headings, which are the row and column headings. We can turn those off here. Uh, in, sh in window number one, we still see the headings there. I'll turn those back on. And same with the freeze panes and a few other window level settings. But the those are really the majority of the ones we use. And as I mentioned before, I believe this is a bug that I hope Microsoft fixes someday. Uh, but for now, what you'll need to do, the best practice here is if you do wanna change those grid lines or any of those window level settings, do that on window number one. Do it over here on window number one when you have multiple windows open. That way when you uh, close down the file, you just close it all the way down to window number one, save it and close it, and you'll save those settings and I've created a macro that also makes this process easier. So I've added a button to it up here in my ribbon. Again, on the view tab, there's this close additional windows or close plus windows button right here that will run the macro. And when we do that, that just closes down all the additional windows and then maximizes the original window. So I'll go ahead and click it now and you can see how it works. Those other windows are closed down and then we have our original window maximized right here. So both of these macros should save you a ton of time if you're using the new window feature often. And you don't have to add those buttons to the view tab. You can also create a custom tab with some of your macro buttons, which I've done here. And here I have the buttons here as well. You can also right click the buttons and add them to the quick access toolbar. And then I have them right up here and I can run these anytime from any file I have open. So I'll just click the new window button there. It does all that setup work on all the sheets for me to add uh, the grid lines and freeze panes and heading settings to every single sheet in the workbook. I also forgot to mention earlier that it does scroll the tab, the active tab into view down here. So you don't have to worry about scrolling back and forth if you have a large workbook with a lot of tabs to find that active tab. So they will absolutely save you a ton of time. And of course you can modify them further if you'd like. And you can leave a comment below this video with any questions or suggestions on how to improve prove these. And I want to say thanks again to everyone for your feedback already to help uh, me create these macros, to help automate this process, just a daily task that we can use macros for to save a ton of time with our job. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.